Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Another episode of Trash Talk with me as always is TG O'Connor. Tonight we have Ruben Vargas Jr. who's getting ready for his kickboxing match going down December 21st at Canterbury Park against Minnesota's own Bobby Lee. That's a huge fight, dude. I mean, that, that's going to be crazy. Uh, Trash Talk is brought to you again by Valhalla Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrink Tattoo out in New Brighton, Minnesota, Origin Wellness CBD, TJ's mom, and the fighters. Oh, How are you doing tonight, Ruben? I'm doing well, guys. How are y'all? I can't complain. Appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. I know we've been trying to get this one set up for the last couple of days, and I'm glad the timing finally worked out. Um, but it, you had some big news. Damien kind of alluded to it. You took, I mean, a short notice would be a good way to sum it up. A uh, short notice fight against a tough guy in, in a tough match. Um, when did you actually get the call for this fight? Yeah, so uh, I think it was a little over a week ago, about a week ago, um, that uh, uh, Coach Tom from Spartan, he, uh, he threw it at me when I, right after I was done training. And uh, he's like, hey, would you, I'm trying to get you on the December 21st card. Would you take Bobby Lee? And I was like, and I, I kind of stopped for a second. I was like, did, did he say that correctly, Bobby Lee? I was like, <laughs> I was like Ab- absolutely. You know, um, I know Bobby's a much bigger guy than me, but, you know, like for the limelight of it all and, uh, and because I think I'll go out there and throw hands with him just fine, um, I definitely said yes. Yeah. So we threw it out there. And then for a second, I thought the fight wasn't going to happen. Uh, just because I, over a week I didn't hear anything, and uh, then I was at a jiu-jitsu competition just this past Saturday, and I took first in my division, and um, and right after I was done, I was in the locker room changing, and uh, my coach called me. He was like, "Hey, they said they want the fight. If you still want it," I was like, "Absolutely." So, uh, you know, here, here we are. We're on less than two weeks' notice. We're running it. So, That's awesome, dude. I, I love it. I love how that actually even played out and everything too. And I know. Uh, one of the th- well, this is just me personally. I, I love when MMA fighters uh, start to branch out and get their striking experience. You know, yeah. uh, I know Bobby Lee has started to fall in love with his striking, and I know you have too. Even still, competing in jujitsu tournaments and stuff, and getting ready for that kickboxing match. You know, I mean, on short notice too. You know, and with it being on such short notice, have you made any changes? Have you have you stopped going to jujitsu and have you just focused on kickboxing, or is it just kind of just running through the motion still? No, I was just in jits last night. For me, it's just you know, <laughs> martial arts is it's a way of life. I've been doing martial arts since I was five years old. And, you know, for me, just uh, making it to the to the gym for every discipline is just that's that's what's important to me. Um, you know, I actually I have a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good striking background as an amateur. I did a lot of, you know, smoker kickboxing fights and boxing fights, um, you know, and uh, my most recent kickboxing fight was uh, for Savage. Uh, uh, that was my last amateur fight actually back in 2015. And, uh, and uh, I fought a uh, Terrence Marquardt, who's I think the 145 pound champ now for them or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I beat him. I beat him up real good. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah just throw it out there. Um, yeah. so, other than that. Um, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I know Bobby, the only thing that's like changed for me is I know he's going to be probably hands down the most durable guy I've ever fought. Um, I fought at that weight before I'm at the 160 pound weight that we're fighting. Um, I've, I fought even heavier than that. Uh, once upon a time I was like 250 pounds in high school and, uh, you know, Man. coming down from like jujitsu competitions, I was doing super heavyweight. Um, uh, my first kickboxing fight in 2010, I fought a guy who was like 210 pounds, six foot five. I was like, I went in at 185. My coach was like, yeah, we're probably not going to take this fight. I was like, no, I got like 30 people coming to watch me for this little smoker fight. We're fighting. He just beat my ass for three rounds. (laughs) It was still, uh, it was still fun because I'm all five foot six. This dude was a monster. He just, yeah. yeah. Um, but still it was, uh, it was a good, so I'm for me, um, I think with the size and, uh, my first MMA fight actually in 2011 was uh, was at 160 pounds. I fought a guy named Tyler Conley, and uh, 
I lost in the third round to him by a rear naked choke, but you know, it was a good learning experience for me. He was a phenomenal guy. Um, so I'm definitely not afraid of the size. Uh, I just know he, with the experience level, I think he's like 14th at welterweight in the nation or whatever. And I just know it's going to be a, it's going to be a scrap. I think, I think I'm a much better striker than him, but I'm definitely going to Ali form in this one. Uh, there's no doubt. Yeah. That Ali form in this one. Yeah, well, definitely. Elaborate a little bit, a little bit more. What do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so uh, I, I, I think I already know what you mean, but I, I need you to elaborate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you know, Muhammad Ali, he, you know, when when he was gonna fight George Foreman, everybody you know was talking all sorts of stuff about you know how George Foreman hit too hard and he finishes everyone in two to three rounds, and you know he's too tough, this, that, and the other. And uh, you know, Ali was like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You know, I fought guys like Zora Foley and you know Sonny Liston, all these guys who are bigger and stronger than me. You know, guys who I shouldn't have been able to you know knock out, but you know, I can outbox these fools. And, you know, like for me, that's, I know walking into this fight, I know like Bobby's going to want to brawl with me. And that's fine. You know, I'm from the streets. We can brawl. I'm okay with that. You know, if you want to throw hands, we can throw hands, but you know, like at the same time, you know, I'm going to be painting a picture in there and that's, that's my goal. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try to knock him out just like he's going to try to knock me, knock me out. So that's just, that's just how it is. We're, we're going to fight. And, you know, that's one thing that you can always express for me. Win, lose, draw, it doesn't matter. I'm going to come out there and I'm going to swing at you. So, Oh, definitely. And and I, I think you, you expressed that through the story you just told about your first fight, showing up, fighting a guy almost a foot taller, 30 pounds heavier, and going, no, I got people coming. I got to fight. Most guys, when they got people coming, they want the easiest fight possible. Let me go fight that 13-year-old kid real quick. But, <laughs> I mean, to, to take the toughest fight and go, hey, you know, that just shows the heart of the fighter. You talk about your experience. You're clearly always in the gym. Before we started recording, you were talking about how you were just looking for competition. So you get your jiu-jitsu tournament, get the short notice fight. How do you think the weight of 160 is going to play out in the fight? Obviously, you mentioned you're normally around a 45-50. Fiber, so you're not cutting much weight out imagine how do you think that's going to play out at, at your normal weight do you think you're going to be more comfortable in there you know i actually i actually do think um i think i'll be more com i think i'll be much i think i'll be uncomfortable in the terms of how durable he's going to be but at the same time um you know the same shots aren't going to hurt him that would hurt you know 45ers but in that same you know breath um i think you know, not having to cut so much weight and, you know, having the cerebral fluids, you know, around my brain, I think I'll be able to take bigger shots too, you know? So I think, I think all in all, like it works out well. I think he'll probably have to cut more weight than me. Cause he's oh, like, I said, he's a much bigger guy than I am. Thick kid. And, uh, yeah, he, he is. Yeah. And, and I've got, I've got nothing but respect for Bobby Lee. You know, I shoot, you know, I follow oh. him on Instagram. The cool guy I got nothing but respect for him, but we still got to fight. And, you know, like in business yeah. is business, we still got to <laughs> fight, you know? So like, um, yeah, it, it's not like, a, you know, I'm notorious for trash talking and this, that and the other, you know, ironically, I'm on trash talking. I mean, I love it, but I don't, <laughs> I don't have anything bad I can say about the guy. I'm, I've always been really impressed by him. Um, he's a phenomenal fighter. But, you know, at the end of the day, I signed a contract. He signed a contract. So we'll go in there and swing at each other and uh, it'll be fun. Oh, yeah. You know, dude, that's what I like. You know, when guys know that, hey, I respect this guy, but yeah, I'm still going to come punch you in your face, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but besides besides his durability, what do you think is another threat that he has to uh, offer you? Besides, I mean, he's got red hair, man. He's soulless, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not I'm I'm not I'm laughing. With what you just said, I'm not laughing at Bobby Lee. No, of course not. Bobby. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that that like, was funny. I mean that. I just I, shoot. I, I faced a a, a redheaded guy at um at uh, the jiu-jitsu tournament pass. I uh, beat him for the championship, but before that, he was thick, you know. And by the way, I didn't. I don't cut weight for jiu-jitsu competition. So like, I wrestled the 171 to 185 division. I I weighed in with my clothes on at 174 pounds, you know. So like, so and and both the guys that I faced had cut down to 185. And, uh, okay. and I still, I still, you know, smoke them and, but like, but still like, you know, I'm, so I'm, I'm not, a, I don't, I don't worry too much about like the weight of things. Um, but yeah, I told the same guy, he had this beautiful beard too. He, and I told him, I was like, Hey man, you know what, no matter what, after this, if you want to get a drink, bro, I'm totally down with that. You, you got red hair and a long beard looking like a overgrown leprechaun, you know? So <laughs> And he, he thought it was hilarious. And then, you know, so like, you know, we, we were talking before, even during, after, I think I told him he smelled nice at one point during our match. Like, yeah, I was just, <laughs> yeah, I was just, it was, you know, 
So. Dude, that, that's great, man. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. I, I can already kind of uh, know. I already know what to uh, kind of expect from this fight, dude. This is going to be a good one. And, yeah, yeah I just can't wait, dude. I, I, I had a question. I, I, I totally just brain farted right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm generally excited for this. Just listen to you talk. I mean, you love competition. And, like, it comes off the way you talk about it. And knowing that this is going to be a tough fight, I feel like even with that being short notice, that excites you more than just, you know, an average fight. I mean, am I wrong? No, you're completely right. Yeah, you know what? I Like, I, I totally embrace the idea of, like, you know, just being a martial artist. I always tell people, like, you know, if I if someone told me, hey, you can never fight again tomorrow, I'd still be in the gym. You know, because, like, I, I, at the end of the day, like, yeah, I'm a professional fighter, but I, I'm a martial artist. And that's been, you know, it's what it's what kept me out of the streets growing up. You know, it's it's what, you know, kept a level head on me. You know, like, it it's... uh it's um it's just you know who i am like martial arts is who i am oh, one day i want to have my gym this that and the other so like um you know like fighting I, that being said i've done security for quite a long time i do security you know in, in the cities and uh you know you got to be ready to throw down all the time and i'd be throwing <laughs> trust me trust me i'd be throwing hands you know at the nightclubs and everything where i'd be doing security and like you know it's you don't there's no weight limits when you're doing that i'm always i D- damien's been next to me i promise you i'm always yeah. the smallest staff but everybody on that staff knows if i'm getting in the mix with someone they just threw the short ass straws everybody yeah. on the staff knows oh that. yeah and, like, Dude, I- and um and that being said like you know like if shoot if bobby had a problem with me in a bar somewhere we could throw it on right then and there so, <laughs> so the fact that we're both ready for you know competition against each other i i'm not concerned about you know the weight or anything like that i i'm excited about it i'm excited by like you said competition and uh, i'm just ready to fight i love it i i I love it one of the things that i i don't like about this sport or i mean just about everything as a whole is that we don't actually know everything about these fighters we can look you guys up we can find your fight records we can find all this stuff but kickboxing and Muay Thai wasn't sanctioned for a long time. And right. it's even, right. even now that it is, it's still not documented that well, where I can go to a website and look up guys records. I can't go to a website and look at uh, how many jujitsu tournaments you've been in, unless you're competing in like the elite of the world tournaments and stuff. Yeah. You don't actually know, but all of that is experience and all of that adds up. And I, you just spoke on a lot of it, man. And right. I actually didn't even know a lot of that stuff. I knew you had uh, competed in jujitsu. I knew you had some smoker fights, but not that much, dude. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know all of this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've been competing for a long time, man. Even a lot of my amateur fights, man. There, there, there wasn't because I grew up in Indiana, and you know, fighting in like Illinois for like Total Fight Challenge and like Cutthroat MMA, like uh, you know, fighting for a lot of those. They they didn't get sanctioning until like 2016. I was already pro yeah. in 2016. Yeah. So you know, like that. So like a lot of that stuff you just can't find on the internet, you know. But like you go in there, you get in the gym with you, but you're like, oh man, this dude's been doing this thing. And here, I don't know if I can flip the camera right quick on y'all but like there's just some of like you know man like, oh cool. hell yeah dude so like i've been competing for a little, this is just the one from this weekend right there no nice. yeah <laughs> I've, I've been at this for a little while you know so so uh, yeah so yeah that's my life man that's my life now that's hell awesome yeah. and, and that just goes to show like damien said you know you're from the wild, wild west days of, of this. I mean, you go back to the pre-sanctioning, and that's the thing that, you know, a lot of things can pray, but showing up at those shows sometimes, not knowing who you're going to fight, those are things that, as crazy as they may have been, they only provide the experience to now where you know you're going to fight Bobby Lee. You know he's going to show up on weight ready to fight, and, and there's nothing to worry about. Like you, you know he's a healthy guy. You don't got to worry about any blood infections, any of that crazy stuff. So it, it's so much more just – calm now i can only imagine and you know the funny thing about that man is like i like you never really even think about like the risk of fighting someone like like who might have yeah. some, like, blood or because like i have just done so many of those these so i used to fight at this place called uh active edge fitness in lansing illinois and uh they used to have smoker fights like sometimes twice a month there you just show up on saturday you know you just show up on a saturday in the afternoon you know, there's like somewhere between 15 and 30 guys there. Everybody, you know, weighs in whatever you weigh in at, you know, then you pick a guy. <laughs> and yeah. You know, they pick you a guy closest to your like size and skill level or, or, and, uh, and then, you know, you just fight, you know, five, six hours later. And, uh, yeah, as a, as a fun, I mean, just a, a grungy gym, you know, with the, with the floor side mat, which, you know, which is great. And, 
you know, which sucks for guys like me because you can't look any taller to like your fans and friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm a short dude. But yeah, <laughs> tall guy. But uh, but still, it was uh, it's a, it, it was fun. It definitely helps for the experience to just be able to you know fight whenever really you know and fight whoever i don't care you know what like the what's i think i think there's there's nothing to be lost here like you know what a, yeah. a few black guys who cares you know like yeah. another day just it's, it's just another day like um i think uh i'd rather i'd rather go out there and you know and perform and you know even i totally understand and recognize it this is a fight that I could totally go out there and get my ass whooped. I totally recognize that. That being said, I don't go into, you know, fights with that sort of mindset. I'm in there to win. You know, yeah. I wouldn't. Hell yeah. and, and my coach believes in me, like, and that means a lot to me. I, I respect the hell out of uh, Coach Tom. And he's, you know, he's just, he's such a good guy and so good to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he wouldn't put me in the ring with someone he didn't think I could beat. And for him, for him to have that belief in me is honest to God, besides my own, all I really need, you know, he, yeah. I know Coach Tom wouldn't put me in there with someone. He didn't think that I, he watches me train. He watched me in the gym. He watches me spar. He knows my background. You know, he, he believes I can win this fight. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna try to win it. And, uh, you know, that's, that's all I can do. And, uh, going in there and trying to win is better than not showing up. So you can always expect Hell me to yeah. show up. <laughs> Man, yeah. that was, Dude. that was perfect. Yeah, no I think that, that was the, why that why the fans thing. should come watch the fight. But but you you said it before I could even get to it. That that was, I, I'm pumped. Yeah, Good. and I I think that that was the the best way to wrap this up. Yeah. But before we do, is there any uh, teammates or sponsors that you'd like to shout out beforehand? Uh, anybody uh, that's been outside the gym showing you extra support? Uh, you know what? I've got I've got to thank all my all my family and my my friends. Most importantly this year, I got to thank my haters because y'all have been through a hell of a year. And, you know, I found myself I found myself posting three times as much this year. And I'm glad they're about to hear this line um, because I was doing it for my haters. I got a few people out there that are a few people, you know, that, that see me do really bad in life. And I'm, I'm glad they've been seeing me just shine. And uh, I want to thank, you know, my long term sponsors. Uh, bad Boy MMA sponsored me since I was 18. Um, you know, always hooking me up. Uh, my sponsors drink simple. Um, they're delicious electrolyte drinks. That they take care of me. They keep me nice and you know hydrated all the time. I share it around. Nick, when I see you too, I'm, I'm hook you up, and uh, <laughs> I'm hook you up. And then uh, yeah, uh, Howard Fiddler, my chiropractor. He's always keeping me on point, keeping me feeling fresh. And uh, my gym, all my teammates, I love them all the same. I mean, I'm in there. I, you should see me in the gym. I walk in, I see kids, and I'm like, hey, do push-ups. And, you know, I'm a military guy, so, like, you know, I'm always teasing them, making them do push-ups and whatnot. So, like, <laughs> like yeah, it's, uh, just all, everybody who's ever, like, supported me and even the ones who don't support me because there's still an extra follow on Instagram. So it's all good. <laughs> dude, I love it. I love yeah. everything you just said, dude. Oh my God, we're definitely gonna have to have you back on again. Yeah. This is yeah, good. Absolutely. This, absolutely. this was a fun interview, dude. I I can't wait. Yeah, December twenty first. Yeah. Oh hell yeah, dude. December twenty first, Canterbury Park. Make sure you get your tickets. Make sure to subscribe with tra to Trash Talk with Damian and TJ. Oh my God, this is gonna be the the most stacked card Minnesota's had all year to go down right at the end of the year, right before Christmas. Get yourself a Christmas present. Buy a ticket. Mm. Are you listening? Damn.